everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Mwipaka. I don't know why I always kind of feel the need to sing the intro. How are we? I'm your host, Becca. We are going to be talking about all things routine. Okay, if you know me on YouTube, I talk about morning routines, evening routines, how to build a routine a lot. But it's like kind of a place for aesthetics, the visuals, and I like making them all pretty and nice to watch. But here we're going to talk about like the nitty gritty deal with how to actually build a routine that works for you, how to find a routine that works for you. Routine is there to help us feel a sense of stability in a chaotic world. Our lives on the day to day can be a little chaotic, unpredictable. Routine helps you navigate all that. Anyway, enjoy the episode. Love you guys. Welcome back to the podcast. How are we? I always start these podcasts with a little update on literally just like what I've been up to for the past week. So we will be doing that. Let me know if you'd like that segment. A lot of you have said that you do, um, but I am actually curious to put it out there as feedback and you're not going to hurt my feelings. Let me know if you'd rather I just kind of jump into the topic a bit more. Mochi is chewing his bone down by me and the mic is definitely going to pick that up so if you hear a weird sort of crunching sound I I don't know I feel too bad taking it off him we ran out of treats the other day and so he's just not been a very happy pup this is episode six we are reaching episode 10 I feel like episode 10 I might do something exciting or you know what I actually teased you guys about that giveaway maybe that giveaway will happen around episode 10 so coming soon something to look forward to something exciting What have I been up to this week? I was in Turkey for my first ever press trip. I told you guys in the last episode how I was going to go do that. um, And I didn't really know what to expect. So, oh my God, I had the best time. Actual bucket list kind of trip. I got there and like every single moment I was there and the activities that had been lined up for us and stuff, I just felt so lucky, like so, so lucky, so blessed to be able to go on something like that and I hadn't even like been on a holiday like that before it was so nice like we did a boat trip actually come to think of it like I've never been on a girls trip I've done trips with girls individually but something that's really been missing in my life is like a girl group I am so jealous of people who have their girl groups like the girl gang their barbies people you went to school with, you went to uni with, you worked with. I don't know. I kind of have people who used to be part of a group, but we're all like spread out across the UK now. And oh, it's just not the same. I have a friend who has like, she's one of my closest friends, but she's very much part of her like girl group from uni. And they all go on like ski trips and holidays. I actually went on a ski trip, (laughs) crashed a ski trip of theirs last year my first time skiing and it was so fun girl trips so good and even though this was like a press trip it was a brand trip we literally all met each other on the day so yeah not your girl trip but it felt like it and I think we were also really lucky that we all got along one of the girls on the trip was saying like yeah sometimes you know when you go on press trip she's been on like way more than me she was just saying like not that there's drama but like yeah sometimes you're going to come across other content creators, journalists, whoever like go on these press trips that you're not going to vibe with. And you have like the next three, four days with them. And so we were just saying how like really, really lovely it was. I don't know, really nice to hang out with people who do what I do, um, but also are in like completely different niches. So there were four of us uh, content creators on this trip. Three of them were like their niche is travel blogging. And I loved watching them do their thing like two of them had really professional cameras like do the whole photography thing professionally so beautiful seeing them do what they do the outfits yeah it was really inspiring actually but yeah I wanted to have a moment of appreciation for you guys because it is because of you guys that I got to go on that trip and just the support you've given my channels my platforms over the years for some crazy reason I got invited to a really 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 cool experience like that and Ah, it was a dream. Also talking about that, I want to say thank you so much for the comments and love I've had on my most recent YouTube video. I posted the, I finally got around to posting the digital detox video. I wanted it definitely to have kind of a message with it. And I wanted to put it together as well as I could. I wanted it to be like 
a step up from my usual videos. Um, I just set myself that challenge. And honestly, that's why it took me a while to actually get around to editing it because I knew I had captured like all these nice shots and stuff, but I was a bit worried about not executing it that well. Yeah, I edited it this week and I have totally like found my groove with it. I had so much fun. I think those are my favorite kind of videos, ones that feel a little bit more like, almost like I'm putting together a little documentary. Again, that sounds so wanky. It is not comparable at all, but just, I mean, in terms of something that is a bit more of a challenge for me in terms of like videography and, and editing, putting it all together. And the comments I got were so sweet. A lot of you guys were saying like, it's one of my favorite videos you've seen, or, you know, it was like a level up, which I really felt like it was when I was doing it. So yeah, I'm so glad. However, like yesterday I was kind of, I hate, when this happens kind of in a weird mood because like I get so drained by when I pour a lot into a video and it maybe performs a bit schmidt it's it's literally not doing badly but it's doing very averagely and if you're a youtuber you know as well when you like go into your um youtube studio app or you look at your analytics i hate how youtube do it they like rank your most recent video from one to ten in terms of performance based on like how many views it's got since you uploaded it and it compares it to your past 10 videos so you open up the app and it's like so it's underperforming basically like that's what youtube's telling you and so when you do a video that you're proud of it wasn't even necessarily that i thought it was gonna do super well because it is something a bit different yeah it's, it's just like a tiring thing how i get in my head about it i'm pretty sure it was grace beverly's most recent podcast episode she was interviewing um a successful instagrammer i can't remember her name if you're really bad but yeah really interesting listening to that and i think it was grace who said like sometimes when you make content that doesn't perform well but like you truly believe in it you believe it to be good content like you cannot get too upset about it performing badly like as long as you're posting content that you're really proud of then you know you're doing your job okay media recommendations of the week i always like to talk about what I'm watching or reading. I actually started the Beckham um, series on Netflix. You know, the new documentary, I think it's like four episodes about um, the Beckhams, like David Beckham, Victoria Beckham. Never been a big fan, but just literally not really had an opinion like of either of them. I'm not into football, but someone said that it was really good and they actually recommended it. And so I started it and then I got Will on it because I was like, this is like all about football. How is this not going to be up your street? We watched it really good. There's just a level now with these Netflix shows. The editors are so good at like putting together the archived footage of, you know, when they're younger and just really like putting a story together in such an entertaining way. What else? I, I finished reading Carrie Soto's back by Taylor Jenkins Reid because I mentioned I think I mentioned last week that I got most of the way through and I wasn't actually loving it and now I have finished it I can confirm it was nice it's like a good read obviously it's Taylor Jenkins Reid it's gonna be good writing she's an amazing author I don't know if it was just like I didn't find Carrie Soto relatable enough and that, it's not like I need that in a character or not likable enough I don't know. I don't know what it is. But anyway, I'm glad I finished it. I'm glad I gave it a really good go. And it's it's a good read. I'm definitely someone who, whenever I'm reading a book, I imagine it being a movie or a TV show. Like I imagine the visuals of it and like how they put together a film. I am always like, oh, I wish this could be a film. And I do think Carrie Soto was back would make a really good film. But like most books I read, I'm like, oh, I wish this was a film. So I've obviously been away on holiday. And it goes without saying, like most of us, when you go away on holiday, it can be a little bit hard to really get back into those healthy habits. For me, it's like working out and waking up early again. I definitely always kind of expect myself to like fall off the bandwagon with. And to be honest, since I've been back this week, I got back on Sunday, it's now Thursday. I have actually been able to bounce back into routine a bit easier and I feel like it has just I'm starting to kind of see and reap the reward of really being consistent and building a routine and getting to a place where I kind of trust myself to still prioritize what matters to me even if I'm not feeling it even if 
I'm having a bad week. I'm having a bad day. It felt really good. It felt really nice to not just sort of have this as like a throwaway week, taking a week to get back on track. And so I want to kind of talk through my morning routine, evening routine, my daily routine from a perspective of actual non-negotiables and how I found this routine that works for me. Maybe something you can draw inspiration from, or I'll just sit here and tell you why I do what I do as someone who's a little obsessed with (laughs) routines and morning routines and just trying to find the optimal one for me. Um, And I think it's very easy to get caught up in the whirlwind of, oh, I I meant to have a 20 step morning routine, but I have to leave the house to get to work at 8 a.m. Like, and I don't fancy waking up at 4 a.m. So, and I completely get that. I'll confess one of those creators who makes the 6 a.m. aesthetic morning routine and I make it look all pretty. And I do what some people would think are unnecessary steps. There's more self-care. There's, you know, there's steps in there that I don't do every day. It's not realistic to do every day. You know, it just romanticizes the whole love your morning kind of idea. But I have had criticism, obviously. There is criticism against creators like myself that create these unrealistic routines on TikTok, on YouTube, on Instagram, whatever. And some people come away and they're like, I actually feel bad. I feel worse. It is so important that whilst it's really nice and can be motivating to watch all that content inspiration to motivate you to maybe level up your routine spend some time on yourself but it's so important as well to recognize that's not going to work for me and that's completely okay I think it is so important that I mention that right now at the start so when you see a morning and evening routine it is so easy to get caught up in oh that's what I have to do to be happy and it's not necessarily that way like for example I started doing reformer Pilates classes because it became trendy like it actually became a trend it was actually around this time a year ago that I did my first Pilates class but I booked it because of influence um and seeing girls I look up to doing it on social media and I thought that would make me happy and it did I love that I found reformer Pilates through watching other people's content but on the flip side there are people who do spin class all the time and I went and did a spin class <laughs> and I hate it you have to recognize what is actually going to work for you build a meaningful routine don't just get caught up in doing you know ice rolling my face in the morning because it's trendy making myself a matcha because it's trendy having a 20 step skincare routine because it's trendy and using all these expensive products that I I can't actually afford or I don't want to spend my money on is it going to make your life that much better the point of routine and like I said in the intro it is to offer you some stability and ease if you build a good routine it offers you these healthy habits where you don't have to think about it so much routine is doing these steps and repetition over time and over time it's not going to feel like as much work one of the hardest parts of getting into routine or starting a new habit is starting if you've read the book like um atomic habits by james clear i think his name is definitely recommend for just understanding kind of the science behind like the formulation of habits a new habit or routine is not just gonna happen overnight and something interesting about routine and habits is you can also have bad routines and bad habits right last year majority of my mornings actually looked like snoozing snoozing going on my phone to wake myself up, getting up at the last minute, kind of doing the bare minimum, getting in the shower ASAP, like moisturizer. I didn't really have a skincare routine. Ironically, I do now. My skin is so bad, but I think that's like other things going on hormonally. Stress, I don't know. I'm I'm not going to ramble on about my skin again because I spoke about that in the last episode. But anyway, last year, yeah, just like bare minimum and then never... <laughs> making time for breakfast that was a big thing with me last year and then every single morning I felt relatively sluggish and I was just waiting for lunch to happen before I could actually like think clearly concentrate definitely feel the difference when I do so there you go an example of sort of a you know quote-unquote bad routine did not benefit me in any way it was not setting me up to have a good day so that's why when it comes to looking at your daily routine A bit of self-reflection, a little bit of a life audit is so important. Think about like, do you actually love your routine, your current routine? I can't talk about routines and not talk about how literally every single day is not the same. Like you have to be willing to adapt. Life is unpredictable. So it's how you kind of trust yourself 
to keep up with it and rely on yourself to take care of yourself and make time every day for the things that actually matter to you, the things you prioritize. The other day I was dropping off my friend. So I technically started my day at like half four in the morning and I dropped her off at the tube station so she could go to the airport. And then I went back to bed for like half five. I got like a bit more sleep, had a slow morning, like a nice morning, but I know it stresses me out if I'm in the gym at 10 a.m. and I like haven't actually started work until 11 a.m. That makes me stressed. <laughs> like I really prefer working out first thing. Otherwise I'm gonna be in the gym on my phone, trying to multitask, not actually being present. So I'm gonna talk you guys through my daily routine. I wanna be really clear that I'm self-employed and so there's a privilege that comes with managing your own schedule. Of, of course, if you need to be in the office by 9 a.m., then you might feel a little bit more restricted by time, but that doesn't mean that you can't have a morning routine. So think about your non-negotiables for the morning. This morning, I had such a nice morning. Got up at half six, so still feels nice and early. Like I'm getting a, a, you know, a good head start to my day. And I had Pilates booked for like half seven. So that gets me out of bed for sure because I can tell you when my alarm went off, it definitely was one of those mornings where I was like, if I didn't have something booked or a place to be, I don't know if my discipline was there this morning. So I went to Pilates and then I actually brought my laptop and I just went straight to a coffee shop afterwards and got some work done. Since I had made it to Pilates and I knew I had a lot to do today work-wise, I was like, I'm gonna treat myself to a coffee. As human beings, we are kind of simple in terms of the doing a task for a reward, you know, that kind of setup. So sometimes it's good to motivate yourself with a little reward at the end. But yeah, I had coffee and I got work done in a coffee shop and there's something so nice about like being at a coffee shop at half eight so it's super early I wasn't all that distracted and started working it was really nice so yeah most mornings on average I'd say I wake up from six to half seven if I want to fit a workout in then it's going to be more like 6 a.m half six one of the first things you want to do is expose yourself to light. And I know this is harder now going into the winter because it is not light anymore at 6 a.m. sadly, but this does not mean turn on your phone. <laughs> this is such a big one. I know we all do it where you have to get out of bed and you go on your phone and you're trying to wake yourself up just from the light of your phone. I actually had it earlier this week when I was, um, I had to get up at half four for my friend. Um, since that was a disgustingly early hour not used to getting up at that time and there's no reason for me to get up at that time normally and I knew I was going back to bed I was like oh I just need to get up so I went on my phone uh, whilst I was like waiting for her to get ready and I was just on TikTok and you know what it put me in such a bad mood and actually now I think about it I was in a bad mood all day no phone is a biggie that is a non-negotiable it is not something I execute every day and I wish I did because it is as clear as day like the difference when I don't go on my phone in the morning, I just crack on with my routine. I don't need to be on social media at 7 a.m. I don't need to check my analytics. I do not need to plug in yet. But all these apps, everything, they're designed to keep you on them. So if you choose to go on in the morning, you're going to find yourself checking your phone again and again and again. Um, we all do it and I, it's a really bad habit that I want to break. So exposure to light, honestly, your brain is so mushy in the morning that you want to give yourself really simple steps. I know to tell myself, just go to the bathroom, just get up, you know, do your morning pee, um, wash your face. Yeah. Just turn that bright light on and then instantly you feel more awake. I then get changed into my workout clothes. If I'm really good and I'm really slaying, I will have my workout clothes put out the night before, but I maybe do that like 2% of the time. I just gotta like get the workout in before my brain's all overly stimulated and I'm thinking about all the million other things I have to do today. If you have watched my videos on YouTube, then you know I've tried to break the habit of having coffee first thing in the morning. Now, don't get me wrong, like life is short. If you wanna have your coffee, have your coffee. But for me, I have noticed having coffee first thing versus just delaying it by like an hour, there's a huge difference. I do also want to add in before I forget, a lot of these like more scientific tips, I have got pretty much all of them from um, Dr. Huberman, the Huberman podcast. He has such an amazing approach to, he's literally a doctor. So coming from a perspective of a professional, understanding how our bodies work. He talks a lot about like these scientific reasons behind 
habits and routines, all that. Really recommend that podcast. Anyway, having coffee in the morning, like first thing, is going to spike your cortisol levels. Cortisol is your body's main stress hormone. And so it affects your mood, it affects fear so much, like your motivation for the day. Um, And if I have a coffee first thing, I most likely will have worse slumps like later on in the day. However, I still love to have a drink in the morning. Have switched out for my AG1 drink, which is a nutritional drink, just like your multivitamin. It's obviously really good for you because I'm having that first thing and I know it's really good for me. Like that feels like something I should be proud of. It feels like a little accomplishment. And there you go. I've listed like three things. But if I start my day with those three simple things that take 10 minutes, I am going to have a good day and then go work out. I'm someone who way prefers to, I've already spoken about it, but way, way prefer working out in the morning. And then I come home and something else that has been an amazing habit for me and is a non-negotiable, obviously happens every day because I'm a dog mom. So I will spend you know, 10 to 20 minutes outside with Mochi before other dog parents jump on me for not doing this very first thing. Like Mochi will not get out of bed at 6 a.m. And I am so glad I'm here for it. My next non-negotiable, have a healthy breakfast. Fuel my body in some way. If I'm feeling kind of rushy, it might just be a protein shake, a smoothie with a bunch of fruit, maybe some spinach, some kale, some protein powder to make me feel fuller and also like help with um, muscle recovery after working out. I have breakfast in mind that like I don't have to think about. I've made them so many times before. They take under 10 minutes and they're really good for me. So whether that's like my yogurt, fruit, granola, or if I want something healthier, I'll go with like eggs, your protein, avocado, your healthy fats, like that kind of breakfast. I've also heard, don't quote me on this because I can't even remember where I got it from. So I can't remember the source at all, but I have heard that um, try, having a savory breakfast in the morning can be better for you as opposed to having like a sweet breakfast, having too much sugar. And then, because let's be real, you've probably made a little bit of a mess, unload the dishwasher, there's probably some like house chores you gotta do. That's something I hate. And this is the point every single morning where I will end up procrastinating if I'm not careful about how I approach it. I don't know who likes cleaning up, but I certainly do not. And so I will find myself going on my phone. But set a timer, five minutes, 10 minutes. And I find actually, if I have a podcast on, I don't go on my phone because my brain is entertained and I'm kind of getting that dopamine from, hopefully it's a good podcast, whatever I'm listening to. So, and and obviously since it's a podcast, like I don't need to be on my phone. I actually really want to get into audiobooks. Sometimes I find it really hard to get through a non-fiction book. But yeah, spend 10 minutes just cleaning up my kitchen, maybe doing some laundry. That's it. Now I'm ready to like properly start the day. Oh, I'll also like probably make my morning coffee now. Morning coffee for me is a ritual. Also a non-negotiable, like you're never going to see me <laughs> not have coffee in the morning. And I love it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Life is short and you cannot be too rigid about health, wellness, routine. Like if something makes you happy, like coffee makes me happy, then just do it. It's okay. When I was in Turkey with the girls, it became apparent to me that I maybe do have a slight caffeine addiction because I was like the only one who was ordering coffee in the morning and like got to the afternoon and I was like, I really want a coffee. A couple of the girls, I didn't see them have coffee the whole trip. I'm like, why have I let myself become addicted? I don't, I don't want to go a day without coffee. Oh, well, it's okay. I completely forgot to say, I do shower, so I'll come home and shower. I, that's just kind of obvious. But I guess something, talking about rituals, is it's, that's something that's so nice to have in your routine. So like I said, coffee in the morning is a ritual for me. Ritual is like a bit of self-care, something that just makes you feel good. Um, and another one for me is skincare, despite like what my skin is going through right now. To be honest, I'm not enjoying trying to work out how to manage my skin but before like two months ago when I had clear skin I loved spending just like five minutes in the morning after showering on my skin something that's like not you know completely necessary something I want to incorporate more on the daily is gratitude because I do think it's really important you know in this world there's so much negativity going on in the world right now and so waking up every morning and just spending a moment to reflect on your life and realizing there is so 
so much to be grateful for is going to put you in a good mood. I have um affirmation pack that I it has like affirmation cards. I'm sure loads of you have seen it, but I change it every week and I just have it sitting on my desk. So that's something I love. I like always see it first thing when I begin work. Then actually, to be fair, last kind of step of my morning routine is writing a meaningful thought through kind of to-do list. Um, this does not have to take up an hour. Definitely not. I will not spend more than 10 minutes doing this, but it is 10 minutes that completely transforms my day, completely determines the trajectory of how my day is going to go. And so for me, it's become really important because of what I do. And sometimes what I do kind of overlaps with personal stuff. So I used to be someone who would have just like the longest to-do list and I would never finish it. And then you get to the end of your day and you feel so dissatisfied with yourself. So I've found for sure having your like non-negotiables in terms of work, like your tasks for the day, things that you do have to do today to call today a success and do not make it more than like two things. Like what do you really, really need to do? Um, and then I'll have sort of my other things, things that take less time and aren't as much a priority. But as soon as I have the non-negotiables ticked and then I start taking away the other things, it's like, oh, I did more. I went above and beyond, even if you didn't really, but you know, it makes you feel a sense of achievement. And then my evening routine has way less steps, but I've had to create boundaries kind of for I finish work and then that's it. I used to be really bad because my work would just kind of overspill into all 24 hours of the day. I mean, not not whilst I'm sleeping, literally. But like, yeah, when you're self-employed, it is easy to work a little bit every hour of the day. And that's just not very good for you. Even though, you know, work gives us so much purpose and fulfillment. I, I love what I do and I'm so lucky to love what I do. But I do think I operate better when I do have downtime. And that is what my evenings are for. Will's come home from his um, office job and so I can hang out with him. Maybe I'll finish a little bit later, like seven, whatever, if I really need to get something like across the line. But then one of us will make dinner. We always use like a meal kit delivery so service. So like HelloFresh or whatever and they're amazing at just <laughs> making sure you have a good meal every weekday evening and, you know, stopping us from ordering takeout. That's a big thing for us. Most nights we watch TV, we'll watch Netflix, we'll watch a show, maybe a film. There's nothing wrong with that. I feel like sometimes I beat myself up about we're not having the most productive evening routine, but obviously we're not. Like you do need to allow your body to rest. Don't feel guilty about it. There's no point. There is no point. Your body needs to rest so it can perform well the next day. And I'd also kind of get in my head about like, well, that's not proper quality couple time either. But when you've been in a relationship for five years, like not every night is date night and that's okay. Like being able to comfortably sit in silence and be yourself, have your downtime together that's a really nice place to be in a relationship if if the other person makes you feel that comfortable and sometimes I overlook that but it is a blessing so yeah I'm trying to see that in a different light and we do love it we love our shows we love spending that time in the evening but I think the thing for us is just to make sure we don't overdo it so it's a case of well we're only watching one episode then go to bed we're, I feel like we're a lot better right now but before it was like oh we're binging something and then before you know it, it's midnight last night was actually so nice we both are currently reading a book we spent like 20 minutes before watching anything just sitting in silence reading it was so nice it was raining as well like really heavy outside so it was really relaxing yeah biggest thing for evening is to shut down work as much as I can and also make things cozy so I'll do my skincare kind of early on take off my makeup that's how I tell my body, like, you're getting ready for bed. I will be in my comfies. And then a big thing is, like, your environment, your ambiance in your home. So I, for example, have recently invested in Philips Hue lighting. Is that what it's called? Philips Hue? Um, basically, like, smart lighting in my home. And it has been so worth the investment. I'm pretty sure I've already spoken about it, so I won't ramble on. But like, 
I saw a TikTok where someone had really orange lighting in their home. Even during the day, it's really nice. It's so cozy, just like orange lamps and stuff. Yeah, I got some bits um, and then also lighting candles is something I really like to do. Just dim all the lights, make it cozy. Um, I have a sunset lamp, which is incredible, like complete game changer. This relates back to the morning routine, but starting my day not with an alarm on my phone is a huge game changer. It's called the Lumi. Yeah, Lumi alarm clock. I got it on Amazon and it starts my day with light that gradually gets brighter. That also helps me for how I was talking about exposure to light in the morning helps you wake up. Obviously kind of replicates like a real sunrise, which is amazing in the winter because you're maybe waking up at six, seven and there isn't actually sun yet. So in your room there is. And also about, yeah, something that isn't on your phone. So you're not literally going on your phone first thing. But equally, it there's like a sunset in the night. And um, red light I've heard is really good for you in the evening to like help you get in the sleepy mood, basically. It like actually improves your quality of sleep. If you just avoid using any really harsh like overhead lights and stuff in the evening, it sounds dramatic, but I'm pretty sure it does like wake your mind up more than you even realize. I try to be in bed by 10 to 10 30 that might sound kind of early to you um I can't imagine that sounds late to many people I feel like it, it you know in general is kind of an early evening routine it really helps when you have a partner who's also in that routine with you and I don't know why I I'm just a little bit older now I guess I do I'm tired by 10 p.m I am ready to sleep this is such generic advice but I wanted to mention it because I think it's really really important that yeah you're gonna have an easier time with routine if you're going to bed at the same time waking up at the same time um saying that I know that's not realistic I never get up at six in the morning when it's a Saturday or Sunday unless I have like a deadline great advice is harder in practice but you can try your best to keep up with it in the weekdays I think that's enough to really see and feel the benefits from it and also sleep is so important. I'm so glad the days are gone of over glamorizing, getting such little sleep, like four hours sleep. I feel like this has been one of my biggest lessons as an adult is it is not cool being that busy person. Like stop glamorizing, being busy, being overly busy. There is a big difference between being busy and being productive. You can be productive within five hours. You can probably do your whole work day in five hours, but that takes discipline and it's a lot easier said than done. It feels like there's more research nowadays about actually how important sleep is and getting a good night's sleep, getting your eight hours. If you want to be smart, <laughs> if you want to be successful, then get your sleep. I'm pretty sure it was um, Diary of CEO. I was listening to Stephen Bartlett talk about how he doesn't set an alarm in the morning and he's like this super successful business owner and now runs like one of the biggest podcasts in the world you'd expect him to be someone who's up at like 5 a.m in the morning but no and he was talking about obviously that comes from a place of privilege that he can get up when he wants kind of manages his own schedule but I found it really interesting and I thought actually that would make a an interesting YouTube video but not setting an alarm for a week thing with routine is do not expect it to happen overnight be realistic with yourself settle with yourself like what actually is important to you every day what are your non-negotiables don't get overwhelmed about trying to change your routine overnight because it's not going to happen you will completely fall off course you'll feel bad about yourself I think it's better starting by changing one thing okay tomorrow I'm going to work out or I'm going to get up half an hour earlier or I will have breakfast it's so like one thing you concentrate on until it feels a lot more natural it feels a lot more like a habit and then you can kind of build from there but I wanted to look at what you guys said on Instagram because I did ask you about what's your favorite part of your routine day or night and then also what's the part of your routine you'd like to change so something that's become routine that you kind of wish wasn't part of your routine favorite part I'm just gonna read through some of these these look really cute reading a book and kissing my wife good morning good night my morning coffee time yes a warm shower oh my gosh I love it 10 minutes of yoga that's something I would love to do more peppermint tea I've been having peppermint tea way more recently my esthetician told me it's good for my skin <laughs> so as soon as she told me that I would I literally had like 
three in one day. Maybe that's not good for you, but lighting a candle, having breakfast, listening to morning jazz. I love this. Oh my gosh. It puts me in such a good mood. I don't know why evening or night. Like when I, I don't need to be listening to podcasts or, you know, on social media, just romanticize my daily routine. I will put some morning evening jazz on it puts me in a really good mood making my morning beverage I completely agree like I said coffee is one of my favorite parts of the day cat cuddles on the sofa yes time with mochi every day I'm so grateful for putting makeup on and skincare at night um my bedtime routine which consists of reading morning pilates evening checklist to prepare myself for the morning right what do you guys want to work on looking at my phone a lot tons of people have said that actually screen time being on my phone being on my phone scrolling first thing check my phone first thing in the morning being on my phone in bed before I go to sleep I want to start by saying first of all like listen to all of you and listen to me we all do it we all do it because (laughs) phones are designed that way social media is designed that way Let's not feel too guilty about it because it is really hard to break that habit. Things that have helped me, if I'm feeling very extreme, I will literally leave my phone in a different room. Will is so extreme that he deletes apps. Like he doesn't have Instagram right now because he's like, I don't want to be on it. Instead, he has Duolingo. He was doing he was doing Duolingo before bed last night. And even though that screen time, it was like something a bit more productive. I feel like if you just make it harder for yourself, genuinely, that's how, you know, we're actually quite simplistic beings in that way. If you restrict the ease of picking up your phone in the morning, in the evening, you might actually find over time it becomes way less of a habit. Someone said, I would love to brave the cold and go to the gym first thing. I just really don't want to do it though. I completely feel that. This morning I found it so hard to get up because it's starting to get really chilly. When it gets to like the colder seasons, I actually will have a hoodie right by my bed. So I like chuck that on first thing. I feel like it's the thought of having to walk to the bathroom to get my nightgown. If I literally put it on whilst I'm in bed, like it's reachable then that makes it a little bit easier. Create more time to just be. I completely get this. In this day and age, we are all just caught up in a rat race. It honestly feels like, and this is 100%, we could all work on this. I feel like a lot of the time that we're plugged in to social media or like being on our phones is time you could swap for being more present being in the moment being more calm one last one I really like this one they've said the mindset of um needing to start quote unquote again on Monday or like next month for failed goals or routines we have all fallen into this narrative because that's just what we've been told right we have new year's resolutions for a reason like you oh you start on monday but i feel like if that's your mentality then you've already failed because you're already kind of excusing it to put it off i i don't know if i have a vice for this because i've definitely been like this i'll be like next week i am eating healthy and it's so it just feels so false and when does that ever work I don't think that has ever worked for me. I think you need to kind of reassess and look internally at like, why do you actually want that goal? Find that meaningful reason that just carries a lot more weight to it. That's definitely something that helps me. For example, with like working out, that was not a habit of mine last year. I was so inconsistent. And this year I have been so, so much more consistent. I'm really proud of myself. I've definitely felt the benefits of it. And now if I go, you know, a few days without working out, I just feel sluggish. I really have managed to build that routine and that habit. And I really didn't wait for perfect timing. Like there's never going to be perfect timing. What if Monday you wake up and you're ill? Trust yourself, commit to it. Okay, there's like a siren going off in the background. I'm so sorry if you can hear it and crazy rain so I'm gonna go I feel like I've been talking long enough this has been um an episode I've been looking forward to filming recording for a very long time so I really hope you guys enjoyed thank you so so much for tuning in I will see you guys next Wednesday please be sure to follow Bloom with Becca on whatever platform you're listening or watching. And if you enjoyed this week's episode, it would mean the world to me if you could rate it five stars on Spotify. Also, thank you so much for 
contributing to the little q a i love how involved you guys are on instagram it makes my job easier and anyway okay i'm gonna go for real now i will see you guys next week bye Thank you, my loves, for listening to this week's episode of Bloom with Becca. Be sure to follow the Bloom with Becca Instagram page to get involved each week with your questions, your stories, your thoughts on different topics, all that good stuff. I'll see you guys next week for a new episode. Love you. Bye.